Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make some rayon pants. So I start by using a washable marker to just sort of loosely draw out some diagonal lines. This is just to get me started. I'm Ultimately, I'm not going to follow these lines, but it just sort of helps me envision what's going to happen. And then I do my spider fingers along this line, just sort of meandering along. And then I'm going to secure it with kite string. I've seen the question asked many times in the Facebook group about using sinew on rayon and if you can do it. And yes, you absolutely can use sinew on rayon. I am not giving these pants any mercy. Now that being said, I'm not being reckless. I'm not ripping and tearing and you know being ag aggressive with the pants, but I'm pulling that sinew very tight. As I'm going along and tying these up, I'm trying to make them random. So some I'm making them wide, some I'm making them narrow, you know, putting them closer together, further apart, just giving it a more random look. I don't want these to just be in perfect stripes. Now I'm working my way down the pant legs, and one of the legs has become much shorter than the other, and that's a good sign because that means the diagonal is working. So don't worry about that, just keep on tying them the way you are. Again, roughing up the fabric, you know, making it look unique, each fold looking different. The, the more random, the better.
for these pants, I decided that I want to do an ice muck dye. So I'm building myself an ice barrier. And then I started thinking, well, maybe I don't want all the dye, you know, the sections to be rubbing up against each other. So I'm just sort of wrapping this around like a cinnamon roll. And it actually worked really well using these uh, silicone cake molds. You could use cardboard or foil. I, I think both those would work fine as well. But if you're interested in these silicone cake molds, I do have them listed down in the description box. For the dye pattern, I chose six colors that I thought would look really nice together. And then I'm just doing a repeating pattern. So every sixth section, you know, is the same color. So put on a mask and then give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash. We're going to be packing on the ice and then it's going to be sitting in the muck water. So I want to make sure that the pH of the fabric stays at about 11. I'm using my second favorite ice. Those are my little hexagon ice cubes that come in the silicone molds. I have a link for those down below in the description box and I got them from Amazon. And these are awesome little ice cubes. They're really dense and they melt slow. So it does give um, cool color split effects. Anyways, if you're interested in those, check them out. And I'm trying to be more methodical with them. That's why I didn't go with the nugget ice. I came out after several hours and I checked on it and I noticed that I had a lot of gaps where the hexagon ice was. So I decided to do just a very light sprinkle of the nugget ice to sort of help fill in those gaps. And then after the ice melted, I let it batch for 24 hours. It's been closer to 48 hours. I just wasn't able to get to the rinse out, but that's okay because after 48 hours, the Soda ash and the dye really aren't reacting anymore, so it's not going to harm anything. And this information came directly from an employee at Dharma, so I trust that they're going to tell me the truth. So you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric, and then gradually increase the water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a hot water cycle. 
I do a second hot water cycle using Synthropol, which is a textile detergent that I get from Dharma. And then I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft, which brings softness back into the fabric. I was reading on Dharma's website when I got these pants, and it said that it could take up to five hot water washes to shrink the rayon. So all these extra washes that I'm actually doing, well, th those are good for your customers because they're not going to get a product that the first time they wash it, it shrinks up on them. So that's just something to keep in mind. Then I'm going to put this stuff in the dryer and we will come back and we'll see our results. Well, here they are guys here's our pants after they've been washed and dried and I can tell you that these photographs are not doing them any favors I need to get a better camera but they turned out great I really like the, the sort of diagonal pattern it's um, not a super harsh diagonal it sort of meanders a little bit I like that for the more natural effect and I do love the colors together I'm going to play around with it because I do wish that it had more saturation all the way through. I thought the muck dye would give it a lot more saturation, but it actually didn't. And then here are some close-up shots so you can really see the pretty color splits. And those dark lines are from the muck, so you, you, know, you get a better view of what's actually going on. I, I'm really overall just pleased with these pants and I can say that Dyeing with rayon is like my new favorite thing to do. It really takes the colors well. Um, it's a nice light fabric to work with. Uh, you're gonna see a lot more rayon items coming for me because I'm enjoying it a lot. So what do you guys think of these pants? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up and click the bell for future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.